Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, I, I'm going to do a little recap and then we're going to get right into it so that uh, we can get to the good stuff. Um, this is uh, How Do You Solve a Problem Like Marina, an ongoing conversation between mostly me and Kelman Androsovsky, who is my good pal, um, a uh, comics uh, pro, a uh, the man who rebooted, yes, you are, you do make a living in comics uh, sometimes. Um, you have made a living in comics. Um, no real professionals in an industry like comics. <laughs> well, just man children messing around. Um, but I will say Calvin is an absolute uh, character design superstar and I am lucky to have him in my life. Um, and uh, we are, he's, he's making, been making himself available to help me with my little passion project, uh, Taking Flight, the completely unofficial uh, unlicensed, um, totally uh, not above board, uh, Alpha Flight animated uh, fan film that uh, came to came into existence as an idea a few years ago. Um, One might say bootleg, or sure. if that one sure. is bread. Yep. However, we want to call it. Uh, we're not allowed to be doing this, but we're doing it anyhow. Um, yeah, it's only Disney. What are they going to do? I mean, they're not, they're not litigious or anything. <laughs> Stop it. I may have to find us, I may have to upload my own player to actually show it at some point, uh, but we'll see. Um, so basically this thing came about as a reaction to uh, working on the Captain Canuck animated series. And uh, I don't mind saying it all out loud, uh, not getting to do all the things we wanted to do. So um, we decided a number of years ago to make this thing and to do everything we wanted to do with Canadian superheroes in a short film using um, Alpha Flight, Marvel's much beloved and much maligned uh, uh, Canadian superhero team. So this is a few years later um, and we are poking away. I've been revisiting script and we are sharing uh, as much as we can with, uh, with the public because you know we're all locked in our basements and attics and wherever we might be. Uh, and need human contact as best as we can get it. So I'm also an egomaniac and like to be on camera. Um, I'm gonna, we've, we've done a little bit of this so far. We are talking about Marina. For those of you who don't know who Marina is, uh, you're not alone. Um, Marina is, uh, what it, I think, should I? Marina is to Alpha Flight what Alpha Flight is to the rest of the Marvel Universe. Um, Marina is basically a blank slate. She is an alien Plodex uh, egg that came to Earth and imprinted on a human. Uh, so she is a Mike. Mike, turn down the nerdy. She's she's a green chick in a bathing <laughs> suit who swims real well. Like that's all I really need okay. to know. Okay, and she's a waterbender, and she gets forgotten a lot of times. And because of that, I made a decision that I was going to make her the hero of our story, and uh, I was going to um, make her the greatest hero, Canada's greatest superhero in this in this reality we're building. So, and I think this bears repeating because this is a really good sort of metaphor uh, you thought up, which is that Alpha Flight is kind of like the stepchild of the Marvel Universe. It's well loved by the people who know, but it's often overlooked and forgotten. And Marina is kind of the Alpha Flight of Alpha Flight in that when people think of Alpha Flight, they often have their favorites and Marina is also often forgotten. And not in small part because she was written out really quickly as soon as John Byrne left. So a run that went, you know, 100 plus issues and then many reboots, she barely ever has showed up because people a... don't really know what to do with her. And there are, there are things endemic to the initial character that I think contribute to that, but I don't think those are terminal. I think some of those are actual secret strengths and there's a lot, a lot there in that character that can be mined and developed and pumped up. And we have sort of discussed some of the, the intricate nuances of the design but um, one thing about Marina that is uh, baked into her, her identity is that she is a Newfoundlander. Yes. And a lot of the members of Alpha Flight were kind of ma uh, mapped to different provinces. So uh, I'm just going to roll right into it, Mike, unless it. you have more. It's all more yours. Man. It's all yours. Just go for it. So today, uh, some of you have been with us on this journey so far, these sort of informal uh, coffee talks. Uh, today, we have our first guest star. Very exciting. If you could share, uh, give me the, do I have share screen power? Or do you have to? Uh, yeah. yeah, you okay. should have it. So um, we have our first guest, uh, Newfoundlander artist, Mike Fian. Say hi, Mike. Wave so everyone knows who you are. Um, hey, how's it going? I'm going to now make you disappear and share my screen for a second. Uh, 
So uh, one of the first things we did when we considered redesigning, reinventing Marina, not, not just changing everything like people have done occasionally, um, but trying to pull out the things that make her special, find what are her totemic iconic qualities, what do we want to emphasize? What do we want to de-emphasize? Is it back to basics? Is it a new take? Um, I hunted around on the internet and this piece of art really jumped out at me. And I know Mike because we met when I was at a con in Newfoundland and he is a great artist, but I didn't, because Mike seriously is the tag. It doesn't say Fian on here. Um, I was a dumb dumb and I capped it and I kept shouting at Mike seriously, but I didn't realize it was actually a guy I knew who drew this. So both Mike and I really responded to this. There's a lot going on here that is just, it's the right kind of everything. Um, you know, the vintage fashion, but it's not, it's not boutique, like high-end vintage, like vintage show clothing mm -hmm. store. It's thrift store vintage, which is where, you know, all those retro trends really come from initially. Um, it's got the gray East Coast kind of vibe. It's kind of sad, it's kind of wistful. It's, uh, it's a marina I immediately fell in love with in a way that actual marina didn't, didn't hit me the same way. And so um, in chatting about it, it came up a lot and Mike noticed and uh, he reached out and we reached out and, uh, and now he's here. So Mike, you have yeah. a, a relationship with Marina and Alpha Flight, both as a fan and as a creator. Uh, can you, uh, oops save that for later. I'm gonna put your face back on the screen. Go away. Um, can you talk about um, your, how you discovered Alpha Flight as a fan, how you came to love Marina and what she means to you as a Newfoundlander? Yeah, um, well, so it, it, I should probably start by saying like what, what you guys were talking about earlier and I mentioned this when we spoke last night is that the metaphor that Mike made is that what Alpha Flight is to the Marvel Universe, Marina is to to Alpha Flight, like kind of kind of forgotten about and not um, not utilized that much. And I think that that's kind of an attitude that a lot of Newfoundlanders have about Newfoundland regarding the rest of Canada. We're often overlooked or forgotten or or made a joke of or whatever. And um, so there's definitely something that connected uh, about that character. Like, of course, it's the Newfoundland character that's not being used. Of course, she got written down. Of course, people forget about her, uh, you know, because like growing up, it's been different in the last maybe decade or so. But growing up, you know, like any time a band or anything would do a, a cross Canada tour, it would end in Halifax. Like, you know, we were always kind of kind of forgotten about in that way. So and it would say so cross that, Canada, the Canada yeah. tour terminating in Halifax. Yeah. yeah every time and uh so yeah when I when I heard about this character it was only a few years ago that I actually became familiar with this character I I, I know it about Alpha Flight I'd seen them like in the um in the 90s X-Men cartoon but of course Marina wasn't part of them when when they showed up so it wasn't until someone mentioned to me on Twitter that this character existed that, that I was like wait what how does how is not everyone here talking about it because you know whatever whatever I, I guess Newfoundland is a really small province when it comes to population. So when we are, when there's a nod to Newfoundland or a Newfoundlander in media, we're all like, hey, hey, that's that's one of us. And uh, I was surprised that that wasn't the case with Marina. It's like people people here don't even know about her. So I wanted to, I really think that that's an interesting thing that you could explore with that character and the fact that like she is kind of a, a blank slate. And I think that, you know, being a, a superhero or being uh, an alien who grows up in Newfoundland, like that's a story that has not been tackled. It's just kind of like mentioned, oh yeah, she's from Newfoundland because it's by the water and she could swim. But like, there's a, so much you can explore there that I don't think has been explored. And that's what got me excited and wanted me to like dive into this character and, and you know, then just start sketching it from a, a place from what I know and like, you know, what kind of community she would be from, like ones that I went to, you know, on trips with my grandparents when I was a kid and, you know, what she would she wear and, and all this kind of stuff. So that's kind of how I got into this character. And so this art that we discovered uh, quite by accident is part of a sort of a, a informal ongoing project for you. Can you talk a bit about that? 
Yes. Um, and maybe show the just, other other parts. Um, yeah, I can I can screen share. Um, so my my plan was how do I do this? I've actually never shared screen on a. Oh, there we go. Oh. Okay, it's happening now. Okay, got it. Um, yeah, so that's that's the that's the original one there that you just showed. Um, yeah, I cropped it. My, my plan. There's a full figure here. You've even got the can, the jelly bean houses in the background. Yeah, it's, this it's is even more like beautiful that. than it is on Instagram, Mike. <laughs> Thanks. I uh, I was driving um, actually the, out by um, uh, the Port Rexton area, which is about three hours outside of St. John's, the city where where I live, and. I had seen this just like from the highway, this strip of road that kind of cut through the bay, uh, to, I guess to put the power lines across the bay. And I thought it was a really cool visual. So I went on Google Maps and I actually like was able to find that exact place and, uh, and set that as the background because I just thought that was a, a cool thing. And like uh, often like I think about like um, if I'm if if I'm driving because my 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 grandparents had houses like maybe um, two or three hours outside of the city and whenever you're driving out there there's so many communities along the coast of the island and you see people walking but like between communities like uh, a community like Harbor Grace and, and Carbonier not that I think a lot of listeners might not know where those places are but you know there's there's a highway between them and you just kind of see like this is what people would would do like oh i'm gonna go visit a friend's house but they live in a different town i'll just i'll just walk um so it's not it's not so what yeah, most people just, would consider a walkable distance but to a newfoundlander no, no big deal just put on your shoes and start hoofing it i mean even to like because because i grew up in the city like you know if you walk around the city it's fine i i when i when i see people walking to uh from yeah just like out in the middle of the highway i'm like where are they going um but yeah, anyways, the, 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 my, my, my project, which I've kind of barely started, is, is just keep spamming uh, social media with these sketches I do of a, a, a marina that's set in Newfoundland and, and hope that somebody at Marvel pays attention. And, and I have emailed some Marvel editors to bother them. Uh, and I'm just hoping that at some point someone's like, oh, yeah, we could do something with this character. Um, so that's that's the first one. It, it's, it's more of marina. Well, surprise, Mike. We have Ricky Purden here watching. <laughs> Oh if my only. god! Um, but yeah, this this one is is more like I was thinking. Um, yeah, that 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 she's she's from the bay. This is this is her in that environment, um, wearing the kind not, of for non Newfoundlanders. The bay is everything outside of St. John's, essentially. Is that right? <laughs> Basically, yeah. It's like if, it, I guess on the mainland, you would say like you'd be out from like the country it's like the equivalent of like being from the country uh we don't have the country we have the bay because all the communities were built around the coast of the islands because they are all you know established as fishing communities cool cool um so yeah that's so outside of outside of the city or town we we refer to everything outside of town as the bay pretty much um, and yeah for when better I, or for people worse. I was from toronto they're like you're from ontario yeah. Like you know, yeah, Toronto. They're like, no, yeah, Ontario. Like, yeah. Sorry, I just took a swig of coffee. Um, and then this one I did. So, this is wow. Um, this is my first time seeing this. Fantastic. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. This. So, uh, I, I'm sure we'll we'll get into this, but in the, um, like the 2011 Alpha Fright run of um the, the fear itself story um the writers that was the one where canada was, was suddenly taken over by a fascist hard right evil government yes how ironic <laughs> yeah and uh and then but americans for some reason, need to write about that and put it in canada yeah and they then like um the alpha flight like tried to escape to america at one point or something during that story it was yeah weird um but they i guess they didn't know what to do with marina i was reading the, the interviews in the back of the issues and they were saying like yeah we just, we just didn't know what to do with that character so, so we just they didn't made... know how to solve a problem like marina perfect perfect title tie-in um yeah they they clearly didn't and they were just like let's make her yell f you at everyone and she's like kind of a a, a punk but like 
what I, I, I think that someone who doesn't really know that much about punk might uh, paint a, a punk as in like 2005. Um, so it was, there was a lot of things going on there that were weird. Um, but as someone who grew up going to, 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 to punk rock shows, playing in punk bands in St. John's, I don't, I wouldn't want to throw all that out of the character entirely. So I was like, what if she did have like an interest in this music? And what if she did, you know, if she came out from the Bay into St. John's to, to go to punk shows or something. So I drew her at this local venue. Um, holding a local beer, Black Horse beer, doing her water bending with the beer, wearing a, a Fog Town, which is a local uh, brand and barbershop merch, and give her a, a little bit of that punk vibe with the, with the Chelsea haircut. And tried to incorporate those strange tribal tattoos that uh, she was given during that arc. Um, I appreciate so yeah. you, um, you being here. respectful to Sorry, those creators, even though you didn't necessarily agree with their direction. And it's funny, like that, Punk Marina, I, I haven't read the run, so I haven't seen it in context. I feel like mm -hmm. as a design, there's nothing wrong with it. It's actually kind of balanced and it's got good lines and good like choices in a way, but it's all wrong for Marina. And yet I love your totally. punk take. And I think the difference really is somebody who knows something about the scene they're attempting to uh, incorporate. Um, this kind of puts me in mind of, um, I'm not going to name the creator because I'm not, I have not actually read their work and I don't know how good or not a writer they are, but they did a Dazzler reboot around the same time. And the tagline oh, yeah. was something to the effect of um, emerging from the glitz and glamour of the underground punk scene, comma, Dazzler, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, if you're writing glitz and glamour to mm -hmm. describe an underground punk scene, you know nothing about underground punk scenes and you probably shouldn't be writing this book. So yeah, yeah that, that sounds like someone saw something like, you know, again, I, I, don't, I don't know the writer and I, I don't, I, I haven't, I'm not familiar with that book, but yeah, like someone saw something in like the early eighties on, you know, uh, Donahue or something about, about punk and was like, oh yeah, like that's, that's my only frame of reference. Or, you know, they've only encountered and, punk in Hot, hot Topic t-shirts. Uh, yeah. To be fair, no, I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to jump in here, Kelman and Mike, quickly. Right yeah. Guys, I'm going to jump in because it, it's, I want to draw a parallel here and talk about this quickly. Um, so I, I know the, like the, the run you're talking about where she was all tattooed and all that kind of thing. Um, it's, this is, it's, it's exactly what we're trying not to do with this film. Um, my goal with this in terms of updating these characters and bringing them into the, the, the today's world is not to make it feel like, well, as we're a, a bunch of middle-aged white guys trying to write something cool. Um, and that's what, and that's when we saw what you were doing. Heaven forbid. When we, well, I mean, that's what it, when we talked about this, that run, it just really feels like, oh, let's make her angry, emo, rage monster, without any connection to what had been done before. Without any, and even though it was, she's a bit of a blank slate, there are there's a foundation of who this character can be baked into those early burn issues. And it just never got explored. Um, we talked previously about her actually being parallels to Superman as being an alien from another planet who lands in a more rural area, is raised by salt of the earth people. And so th that sense of responsibility to her community is what drives her as a hero. Um, nowhere in that is this angsty, ragey thing. I mean, she does have a berserker rage thing that she does with the plodex side of her personality um yeah but it's not it just it just didn't ring true with what had been done before and in my mind that's disrespectful to the underlying aspects of the character when we saw yours mm -hmm. while it's a different representation of who she is to what we are doing you're coming from the same place where you're trying to ground this character in something real like i Calvin and i mm -hmm. when we write together i mean i get annoying this way because it's always like well why would they be that way what would this person be if they came from this place and if they lived this way and if these things happened to them, what kind of shoes would they wear? Um, so yeah, uh, I think yeah. as Lance put it in the chat here, the byway jacket. Um, yep. You know, it's, it's there's um, like, what stores would they shop at? And that's real. And that's what gives us exactly, so yeah. into who a person is and who a character is. And I think that's why we're talking about character design and development as two things that go hand in hand. Um, when you're trying to figure out who this character is, the visuals come into play and they tell the story. Um, a good character design should tell that story from the ground up. 
And and I and that's what I think yours yours tells a story in one image, and that's bloody amazing. It's exactly what we're trying to do Thank you. with what we're doing, um, but with you know a cast of eight or nine characters or more, um, and giving them each their moment. So again, this is why, and I think it's fascinating that you actually were watching our last one and your artwork popped up on the screen. Yeah. Uh, my question quickly must is, have blown your mind. You? <laughs> what was that like? <laughs> I, I, I kind of like, I think there was a couple of, did you show any other like just fan art of Marina that you pulled off the internet? There was, there was a part of me in my head that I was like, I bet my drawing's going to show up in this. And like, I don't think that was narcissism. I just had like, I was like, there's not a whole lot of Marina fan art out there. So I assumed if you <laughs> search like hashtag Marina on Instagram, you would find it. Um, but yeah, it was cool. And I, I like, like, I really appreciate that. Like, you 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 got it like that what, what you just said is was in, in, entirely my my intention with it was to to have this something that seemed grounded and and, and honest because like yeah i could even like drawing drawing a, a parallel back to the punk thing but like as someone who like is you know went to punk shows for years and very familiar with that scene when it's done in media inauthentically anyone who's familiar with that is like you know that's not what that's like that's like you, you know how many times have you I seen smell it? it yeah like a mosh pit in on tv i'm like that's not what a mosh pit at a punk show is like like you yeah and, and you're you kind of like it's it's not nice to see that you want you want it to feel authentic and when people get it right you you, you can tell and i even think people who aren't familiar with it when when, when it feels authentic they know and the same thing goes for for newfoundland if i saw a character from newfoundland like there is something about being from here that that informs the type of person that you are, the character you are. You can't just like the fact that sh this is a character who's popping up and stuff uh, in in the Marvel universe, and like you 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 know basically other than the fact that she swims, um, being a Newfoundlander isn't integral to, or at least that wasn't showcased in that way. Uh, and I think that that's something that you would definitely want to definitely want to see. Uh, in that character like there's certain things that she would say and things she wouldn't say there's certain ways that she would dress there's attitudes that she would have I'm not saying that every Newfoundlander is the same but like there's a shared experience that you have growing up here that I, I, I think you know even when, when when Newfoundlanders go to the mainland um, we get homesick and like we you know search you know strange Newfoundland comfort foods like there's when I was I was living in Ontario last year actually and like I drove a, an hour and a half to um, Cambridge because there was a Newfoundland store in Cambridge that sold like Newfoundland specific products and stuff. There's one in Toronto now. Buddy, there's one on Queen West, right? Right in Queen West, right by I, the Raid I was, Studio. I was in London. Okay. I was, oh, oh, I was okay. living in London, but there's one in, by the Raid Studio. That's yeah, that's right across the street, practically. Yeah. And they have all the uh, all the cookies. They have. I mean, it's fantastic. It's the hickory crust. I, mean, I was that. able to get the um, the the uh, the syrup. For making the oh, drink, purity syrup, yeah, yeah, yeah the purity, purity syrup. Sack factories just uh, just <laughs> up the street. Uh, but it, yeah, I mean, like the fact that there's 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 several Newfoundland stores, independently owned Newfoundland stores in Ontario, and it's like there's not a Saskatchewan store. No, no offense, to Saskatchewan, but like there's there's a unique something. There's a cultural identity here that like yeah, it, it's a thing. Um, so I like, I'd, I'd like As to an see outsider that. visiting, yeah. like it's a magical place that is unlike anything else in Canada. Well, uh, Kalman and I, it occupies a distinct spot. So we discovered on our call last night, cause Kalman and I have both visited, New I go most years in the summer, but we both have been there in August and mm -hmm. Mike pointed out to us last night that that's like everybody who comes, comes in August and that's the perfect time of year to come. And so we're kind of writing off the entire, the 11 other months of the year where maybe it's not a paradise on yeah. earth. Yeah, I, I think that I, I looked this up because I mean, obviously like uh, I, I showed that, that drawing in Marina, like the, the Fogtown, the Fogtown merch. Um, like we, we have the nickname Fogtown for a reason. Uh, like it, it is, I think I looked this up a few years ago, like statistically the foggiest place in North America, um, <laughs> perhaps like one of the most foggy places in the world. Like, and I think there's been articles written that are like statistically the most miserable weather anywhere in Canada, if not North America. Like it's, it's like, I know that the West coast, like Vancouver, Seattle has this reputation of being cloudy and raining all the time. Like 
it's cloudy and rainy and cold here and our winters last six months so they get like 10 feet of snow so like you there there it's it's not easy to live here but i guess it's worth it like it's it is a beautiful <laughs> place it can be and, and with like today the sun came out and like i was like oh yeah this place is awesome um but yeah it's it's not like that all the time good for um, freelance not a lot of distraction oh definitely yeah so I, again I'm, i i know i was totally we discussed that calman would kind of be more but i can't stop myself um yeah. i think what, what, what's, what's also fascinating for me is that what's happened in terms of finding you and you getting to be a part of this in this in this regard talking about this is kind of what I hoped for this whole project um, because authenticity is so important because uh, I'm getting one shot at making something like this um, I was hoping that in terms of kind of putting this stuff transparently out there and making this process transparent that we would maybe because because Alpha Flight is so representational there's so much in there in terms of the various cultures in Canada. Um, and so the fact that just even the Newfoundland one found us somebody who is from there and, and connects to the character and is doing the same kind of work in terms of trying to bring that authenticity to it. I mean, I myself have, I've made her hometown be the town I go to uh, in Newfoundland in the summer Grand Bank because I know that town. I know where her house would be. I know where what her day would be like. Um, I can visualize it. I can see it. I can I can smell it. I can breathe it in, and that's that's the goal of a project like this. When we don't have any other agenda being wedged into it in terms of like uh, selling toys or any of those kinds of things, it's just to make this thing into like. This, why bother doing it if you're not going to do it right? So, um, you know, in the, in the process, we're also, you know, I'm hoping that this will continue as we move into the other characters. Uh, a lot of First Nations representation in this. And, uh, you know, we're trying to talk to people. Because so, I don't want to be the only person. I'm, I'm, that's, there are things I can relate to. There's things I can bring to it. And we'll touch on a few of those later in other, in other talks. Um, because there was a Cosmic Ray Lab right down the street from me when growing up here in Ottawa. And now Walter Langowski works at that Cosmic Ray Lab. Um, and that's the kind of shit we want to do. It's real to us. And that's what's going to be. Is that why up. you grew up and turned into a Sasquatch, Mike? That might be the, yeah, we, the, the park was right across the street from it. So uh, it's, it's altogether possible that my, I'm going to sue them for my baldness, I guess. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's, it's now a, a couple of really cool condos. It's, it's not a cosmic ray lab anymore. Um, but yeah, but this is exactly what I, when you have a project like this and you kind of put your hopes out there for it, having you connect to us on it is like that's the dream come true aspect of this for me um and to to get it out there and to get other people part of it um because it's silly it's i mean it's, it's a thing that i don't know it actually means a lot to some people and mm -hmm. uh and to have this kind of like opportunity is is just fantastic um so again this is another quick thank you but also underscoring the whole intent behind this the, that it's it's I'm, I'm trying to be transparent about it I welcome people to the table because I love especially now that we're all locked away um, I'm a collaborative person uh, so to have this kind of feedback and to see that what we're doing someone else is doing something similar underscores that this is the way to go uh, and it's just, that's how I, I felt about when I saw your your um, your last talk as well like when everything you were saying I was like oh my god like the, like he cares about this character cares about the, the 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 getting the newfoundland element right the care the cares about getting her right and like yeah like like yeah like i said you, you search on instagram or anything else like hashtag marina there's not a lot of stuff there's not a lot of marina fans and then so i i'd heard before uh, i think maybe a couple of years ago when i was at fan expo people talking about the fact that you were doing this this project i'd heard about it just kind of like through the grapevine and uh and then when it when it popped up like in my Twitter feed that like you were focusing on Marina, I was like, "That's awesome! Like, I, I I definitely want to check this out." <laughs> we need more like you, then, um, Mike. <laughs> Mike, I have a practical design question for you. Yes. I noticed something uh, yeah. specific about your two uh, Marina interpretations. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually, I guess it's only one of them, but we can assume it's present in both. Uh, she has ears. Yes. Uh, so those were so both are you aware with... of the ear versus no ear debate that is going on throughout in the background of this uh, these conversations? I, I paid close attention to that during your last talk. Um, so I'll yeah, forgive you because I suspect that I you threw that long before you heard about it. But uh, 
Yeah, what do yeah you that's something that I, you know, as, as an artist and as someone who is supposed to um, observe and pay attention to details and things like that, I did not notice that she did not have ears. Um, so yeah, I, now, now that you, especially after seeing your designs and seeing like some of those like, uh, like pixie cuts or like kind of bobs that she had where her hair covered where her ears would be, like, I think that is something that, yeah, could definitely be important to the character. And like, you know, if she's going to school and stuff and, you know, she doesn't have ears, people might think that's weird. So she, maybe she wears her hair like that to cover that up. So yeah, I definitely. There now, could be some trauma, some young, young yeah. trauma, you know, it's, being, being othered because of it. It's a weird, yeah, absolutely. It's a weird phenomenon when you go back to look at it and because I mean, Kalman discovered this and it, he discovered it by basically just looking for Marina reference and noticing that it's not like it's ever expressly shown that she doesn't have ears in Burns Run, but it's just mm -hmm. that he never shows them. Her and hair seemed, is always covering yeah. it, even when there's no way her hair would be like- Yeah, like it, it seems like he went out of his way to, to just make it a mystery. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I, so I asked on the Burn forum and yes, he gave uh, us a deeply unsatisfying response. <laughs> yeah, he actually responded saying like, I don't remember. I guess she has no ears. Mm -hmm. Like it was just this. So, I mean, we've, we've embraced- He answered the way any of us would, would answer going, well, judging by her origin and looking at the page, we can infer that she must have ears, but there was no like, and I thought at the time, blah, 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 you know? Yeah, yeah. So that was very yeah. unsatisfying. That's simply one of those like happy, happy accident things that you can retcon and be like, oh, this is done. This, she's never had ears. This is important to the character, you know? Yeah, I, I went back to the origin moment where the, you know, the little Plodex baby and the egg is picked up. And I really hope that the lady who found her had hair covering her ears. So like whatever Plodex magic made her duplicate humans, she just didn't realize there were ears. Yeah. <laughs> like it's some sort of like 3D scan rather than some genetic thing. And it's like, you know, Love at that. age five, she, her mother gets a haircut. And she's like, what are those? Oh no. But uh, that sadly is not the case. The mother's ears are clearly visible. But if you think of Marina as sort of being archetypal uh, frog fish, neither neither has ears. True. Yeah, I think it's something that I mean we've embraced it and we've looked for you know examples. We found some frog examples that have interesting shapes that are they tie into the ear shape, but they're a little more alien looking. Um, so mm -hmm. we're trying to embrace that a little bit and find it's what I find is interesting is then trying to um, other than have it, her hair cover it. Uh, how does the hair actually line up around this weird ridge thing that frogs have? It's, it's, a, it's a different kind of approach. It does affect kind of the skull structure while you're drawing mm -hmm. her. Um, so trying to figure out what those effects really are and what it does to what we can do with her is a weird little challenge along the way um, that I didn't anticipate. But it does, it does lean us into the alien side of her a little bit more, um, mm -hmm. which, is, which is fine. I mean, it's, 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 I think it, it works really well. The Kalman's point, was like it's like crossing a uh, an amphibian with a with an it's a classic gray alien um, because of the big eyes and that kind of thing. So I think there's a lot that we have to work with, and mm -hmm. um, certainly Kalman is uh, is making me feel really happy every time he sends something my way uh, because he seems. To, I mean, like again, we've worked together, so I, I have a certain expectation, but it's always a really pleasant surprise. Um, yeah, it's. I think we're we're we are. I feel like we're like inches away from landing on our marina, uh, mm -hmm. which is a really nice feeling um, because then I also want to get out of the other characters too. Something that you uh, you mentioned when we were talking about the ears and potentially like covering it up from uh, yeah like trauma, uh, like being being judged for for having no ears. It, it, that reminded me of the um, of the I guess infamous line that that John Green wrote in one of those early issues <laughs> when he's like. I, I, that that's the thing that made me I, like I, I I was interested in this character because she was from Newfoundland. But when I saw that, I was like, "Oh no, someone is, needs to do this do this this right." Because it it said like the caption that he gave in her backstory is like, "Yes, like she had green skin and webbed feet, but in that you know town of inbred hicks, no one bat an eyelash at her." Like, I still like, can't well, believe that's real. Yeah, <laughs> in, I mean, inbred that's, freaks. That's that's where we start in terms of trying to fix this, you know, like that's, that's, that's the starting place in fixing this. He actually said, yeah, uh, in the small inbred community. Um, and like, oh, for God's no, sake. No, John, no, bad. So yes, that's what we're fighting with no, so right like, look, That's what it, we're trying it, to fix. It, it, there's, uh, 
I, yeah, I, ever since reading that line, I was like, this character needs to be, they need to handle it differently and maybe go, because if, if anyone wanted to, if, if Marina were to pop up in something and, and become a character that people get attached to and, and interested in, they might want to go back and be like, okay, what's her origin story? And then you read that and be like, oh, she's from a, an island full of inbred freaks. Okay. And uh, I, I don't want that to be their, no. their, their reference for her. Yeah, that can't be the legacy. Yeah. And hopefully, uh, if people like this, um, you know, then it'll create sort of a new template uh, that we can hopefully carry on from. Uh, again, I, I have no idea what's going to happen with this film when it's done. Um, I'm not, I mean, as we're treating it like a super just off the grid, uh, you know, completely unofficial film, I'm not even looking into music rights. I'm just going to use whatever music I want. I'm just going to do, I'm going to oh do boy. everything I want to do with this without holding back anything. And if it means that I have to put it on a, on a player, on a website all by itself, I'll do it that way. Um, because, and then if we, you know, we might do a, we might recut it if we want to spread it around a little bigger. Um, but right now the goal is to just not have any limitations that way. If we, like, so Mike, one thing we haven't really done in these, and maybe we can start today, but I'm not to put you on the spot, but do you have a sense of like, how's the script coming? Do you have a, a progress update? What's sure. uh, where think that? Yeah, um, I actually, so I, I mentioned it on the, so I'll plug, I mentioned it on the Patreon that, this past week. Um, so I've, because I was kind of hitting my head against the wall on the character design front, um, I jumped back into writing this week. And, uh, and I feel like it's it's amazing to see where we started, and uh, and where it's at now. I hit my groove a couple times. There's a few key scenes that I feel really happy about because what's what I finally am doing now is, for me, I feel like I've now got a sense of who these characters are in terms of what we're doing with them. Um, and the original treatment and the original script was very kind of still very superficial in terms of just it described the action and had a few lines, but there wasn't like they weren't all getting their moment. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, I'm finding that I can get those moments in uh, with a line, with a throwaway line. It shows the relationship because I've evolved some of the relationships. Like we've, like I, said, I was mentioning with uh, Sasquatch, um, in this world, uh, I've played with the timelines a little bit. Um, Walter is sort of a previous generation. He's an older. He's a. He's he'd be closer to my age, um, and he's been Sasquatch for a while, and he loves it. Um, but at one point, he was the hot, the cool superhero. Um, you know, in the early 2000s, and he was on the cover of every magazine. And uh, and and as he's and, and you know the, the 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 sheen has gone off of it, but he's uh, it's just putting him in a place where it's real again. And then that adds to the relationship between him and Aurora, and why North Star perhaps would not like it because he's also like twice her age. Aurora's not a kid. Um, he's not like let's not let's not go into the wrong territory here. Um, but it's definitely a, a May-December romance, um, which some people... I think may have been a factor in the original, too, somewhat. But maybe yeah, I don't know how much the age difference was there then. I haven't seen a lot of reference to it, but it's in, it, it solidified some things there. Um, mm. Puck has solidified a lot more in terms of how... Because we've updated him with actual, like, his, his, he actually has... We've removed the curse aspect. We've removed, like, I, the same way that the inbred thing always troubled me. Um, Puck, what they did with him later was they made him formerly a full-sized human who was then cursed at, into, cursed with dwarfism as part of this magical thing. Not um, just full size, but like specifically tall. Oh yeah, yeah. He's like six foot six or something. And like, I just don't have any room for that. I think like Puck is what Puck is, and he's been around yeah. forever. He's he's uh you know he would have been in, he would have been involved in other operations with the government before Alpha Flight came along. Um, and I've even got like Kalman's that, that drawing you did that, um, uh, that I will be, I'll get my hands on at some point. Um, that to me represents like sometime in the sixties or seventies, he did a little bit of time as a, as a, as a wrestler in Quebec. Cause there's these great old, my dad used to talk about all these wrestlers in, in Canada. So I want to make a wrestling, uh, magazine cover to show puck with that, that pose that Kalman's done. Um, Jean-Paul Northstar, updating him for today is there. Uh, Snowbird, Talisman, Shaman, there's a really interesting relationship that's all in that. And in the little bit I wrote and I shared with Kalman, uh, where Talisman, Northstar is feeding Talisman power in our fight scene. And then she kind of like doubles down and does it some more. Um, Talisman refers to her as like sister. 
And, and it seems like a throwaway line, but it's actually a really important line in terms of them acknowledging each other. So because we're, it's a short film, it's hard to cram all those relationships in properly. Um, but that's what I feel like I've unlocked now. Uh, going back, it's still the same storyline, but the moments are coming now, the moments are there. And it's still kind of a chunk at a time. Uh, and I'm also trying to not have this become like a whole 22 minute episode. It'd be great if this thing clocked in around seven minutes, um, but I can't think that way right now. I just have to write what it needs to be. And I think before I was writing to constraints and that's what was let, I was losing those moments. Um, and now I've, the, this latest pass is just opening it right up so that we get everything right. And I'll underscore again, like, like Marina is at this stage of, the, of, our, of our world, Canada's greatest superhero. She is the one that every, like she's, she's young and relatable and all those things. Um, she's humble, she's powerful. She is the hero of the day. And, uh, and we actually see her, cause we open, we open with her recruitment moment. And it's like, and that's a few years in the past. And then the body of the film takes place in the present uh, in Toronto where I get to destroy Young and Dundas. Um, that's been a goal of mine. Calman can attest to that. There's uh, an unmade- <laughs> target. There's an un, the, un, the unfinished uh, season two of Captain Canuck um, was going to have us destroy Dundas Square, which is my most hated place in all of Toronto. Um, and I didn't get to do it there. So I get to do it here. Uh, I kind of did it in the comics it. for you, but it's not the same as seeing it live <laughs> in motion. Um, and, and so, yeah, so I find like the, the relationships have solidified, the characters have solidified for me. Um, I draw a lot of parallels. So like Shaman, I look at like what he would be today. And the correlation I draw is like, I'm making him into like a uh, David Suzuki like character, like per- person in Canada's landscape, um, but from a different perspective. I mean, he's a healer, he's a shaman, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, a famous surgeon. It's hard to write him and not have him turn into Doctor Strange because there's mm. it, like- Or Buckaroo can... Banzai. Yeah, I guess so, eh? Um, but um, even like as a doctor, he's a famous world-class surgeon or whatever, and then he- uh, so he's from Sasquatch's generation in this, essentially, yeah. is what you're saying, right? Exactly. So they might have a history. Um, and, that, and it is. It's in establishing what those histories are. Um, and then, again, just giving the audience glimpses of it so that they understand there's deep, deep backstory um, without, having, without going into them. So that's been where we're at. That's where we're at at the moment. Um, I feel like I'll have a, a, a full pass done in the next month because it is still something that's done part-time. Um, but we're getting close and, and I mean, I'm sure it's not the last pass I'll do. Uh, what I find is once we get into storyboards, um, there will be a separate script that's written after first pass of boards to kind of bring it back down and see where, see where things lie. Um, oh, interesting. Public is that a common animation, uh, move or is that something you've it, sort of developed in your own practice? It should be. Um, okay. In, in Canadian animation, we largely just make the script because that's all right. we're allowed to do. Uh, when you're doing something that's, I, th- I think the proper way to do it is you take your script as your starting point. You have board artists who are legitimate storytellers and not just pencils for hire. Um, and then the board artists collaborate with you as a writer. Uh, you treat them like writers. And, uh, and I've got a couple of people that I like to use um, who I treat like writers and I'm hoping that they will stay available for this, uh, for this film. Um, cause that's where things are going to actually, so, okay, this will end up being a plug here. Um, that's I'm just going to share start... my screen while you keep talking. Yeah. Just keep to, so uh, tell Calman, just tell people what you're doing actually here. Oh, like, well, don't think you actually describe that's not the screen I'm about to share. Uh, I'm doing a, a marina painting here. It's uh, it's just in the undertone phase, but uh, it's an image I had in my head based on the uh, Hans Christian Andersen Little Mermaid statue. Um, there's no hint of it yet because it's just the red undercoat, but there's going to be a giant iceberg behind her, which is a, a common sight in Newfoundland. So I just thought I'd move the brush here and give you guys something to look at while our fat heads talk. Um, but yeah, I'm going to show something else now, though, while uh, yeah. my continues to chat. Um. Yeah, so I mean, that, so this is, a, 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 as a production update, um, I'll share with everybody how this is gonna go. I'm trying to do as much of this myself up front so that it's not costing anything. And this is where I'm lucky to have friends. There's um, the inspiration, in case you don't, you're not familiar. Rad. So, um, 
I'm 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 working on my drawing chops again because I don't do it for a living these days, and uh, character design is what I love. So I'm I'm getting as far as I can into the character design process again. I'm trying to get as much of the development done without it costing us anything. But when we get into full production, there is going to be a cost. So right now, and this is the plug, I do have a Patreon set up. Um, this plays into a, a larger thing that I'm trying to figure out for myself. I I largely stepped away from television production over the last year to focus on um, smaller projects, short films, developing some features. Um, this is a really important one for me. And I'm trying to um, I'm trying to do things a different way. So Patreon is something that I am using uh, to help support myself. And uh, while I don't want to be, I, I have to learn to push that out there a little more. Uh, so if anybody here wants to uh, wants to help support this project, Patreon's a great place to do it, and you'll get a little bit of a back end view of some of the things we're doing. I, I post little bits that I don't always share publicly. Um, I'll put a link up in the chat. And, um, but it's trying to do things a different way. And with my studio, I'm also trying to turn it into what is essentially a very transparent studio. I want to engage fans and other artists and other people that way to help create something that people can be a part of. Um, and I encourage anybody who, who likes what we're doing here to actually just reach out. And if you want to be involved, talk to me about it. Um, I can't make room for everybody because I also know this has to be the best thing possible. Um, but at the same time, I want to hear from people and I want people to feel engaged in this and I want people to take part. Um, so I encourage everybody, I'll, I'll post a link up. If you want to help support it, if you want to do whatever you can, that's great. If not, just keep tuning in because I need this too. I, this is what helps keep me going. Um, and uh, some weeks it's harder to do it. Uh, so having this as a goal is always amazing. Having time with Kalman this way, uh, Mike, having you come into the mix now is really fantastic. I'm reaching out to some other creators, primarily First Nations creators, because there's so much of that in this. Um, and that I, and, and, and Byrne admittedly, he said, he just made all that shit up. Um, I, I should stress that about this project. Uh, the way we're looking at the, you know, we've got representation here from Newfoundland and we're trying to create the reality of that. Um, with the First Nations characters, Byrne basically created First Nations mythology that he could then use. Um, we're trying to find the correlations uh, we're trying to find like what are what were these great beasts what what space would they occupy in the stories of our first nations culture um, and to that end i've reached out to a few writer creators and i'm looking for people to help me reconcile that because that's not my story to tell and um, even though this is something small this is how i feel we should make things today and I, this is how i believe this needs to be done so the fact that right now we're three, I mean, Mike, you're not middle-aged yet, um, but certainly Calman and I fit that bill. Uh, a couple of middle-aged white guys sitting in the middle of all this. Um, I, need, I need more voices involved. Um, mm. and, and not just in a token, I mean, that's the other part. It's, it's not tokenism. Um, you know, it's, it's not, I'm not looking for someone to be my First Nations consultant. Uh, I want them to feel like they're involved in this and, and they have a voice. So please, anybody listening, um, I'm looking for people to, uh, to help me reconcile this. The... I know about some of the people you've reached out to, and I'm super excited about the possibilities there. Um, we're kind of running short on time, so yeah. I just want to quickly uh, talk about uh, costuming a little bit. Not even. Uh, what do you, what, did you see my screen? Did that, I share that correctly? Do you have any thoughts on this, Mike? I want to talk about this for two seconds. And then I saw it for a second, but I was very much up. in my head. So <laughs> you're in the zone. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, so I was hoping to have more of these ready, but I was way too enamored with my painting. Um, so the figure on the left is the first take. This is me drawing over Mike's uh, marina drawing and bringing a lot of uh, vintage bathing suit reference, uh, trying to keep the essence of the retro hairstyle while modernizing it a bit, emphasizing what's iconic about Marina, which is her oddly sideways boomerang shaped eyebrows and her large and <laughs> solid eyes, in my opinion. I made them blue instead of black just to make her a little bit more approachable. The shiny black, I think is part of it's certainly a key element to her, but it's also, I think, has been a bit of a barrier for people really embracing her or, or like connecting with her. So I made mm -hmm. the eyes blue. 
Um, I, I looked at a lot of 80s graphic bathing suits because there's another character who uh, we talked about a lot called Fathom in the Elementals, who's essentially uh, visually very close in power set and look to Marina, but has a completely different personality and is quite striking and iconic just in her choice of costuming on top of it. By making Marina's green bathing suit green like the rest of her, she gets very one note. So I mm -hmm. applied some graphic sort of asymmetri asymmetrical elements to the, to the bathing suit here and uh, incorporated also Mike's uh, desire for kind of a waterbender color scheme. Um, so I did a, a second pass. One of the things I, I noticed that I don't think is working about this first costume is everything's the, the upward facing triangles kind of emphasize her sort of uh, her pear shape, which is as a swimmer, she has very powerful thighs and also shoulders, but her limbs are fairly slight other than that. And having those upward facing triangles is kind of unfortunately kind of draws attention to that in a not entirely flattering way. So I tried to, to do another take with uh, more downward facing triangles. Um, and just by accident, I kept that white point because I kind of like the way it looks almost like uh, the belly pattern of a dolphin or a whale or a fish. Um, but I tried to incorporate some downward facing uh, triangles to kind of uh, change the vibe essentially um, while keeping the color scheme. And I know Mike, I know you love symmetry. So yeah. um, <laughs> I have not successfully incorporated an M. There are things that could sort of be M's if you really stretch your mind, but there's, there's no M in this. But this, this is feeling maybe a little too ultimates for me that that downward chevron is sort right. of um, was yeah. the last thing I added. And it gives an impression that I'm not entirely sure I want here. There may be ways to keep that shape, but change the, uh, the size relationships and the color relationships to give a, a different impression. But yeah, so this is, this is where I'm at. I don't think this is it, but it's a, it's a step and there's, I'm definitely thinking about things differently now. Do you you're, have any thoughts on this, Mike or Mike? It's, you're, you're addressing some of the things that I came across when I was taking your design one and playing with it from my end, I was shifting her more straight on and those triangles coming to a point up here, they kind of get a little, it's hard to distinguish when, once you start working with the contours of her body, it's hard to, to distinguish sort of where those things should land properly. And they never, because she is shapely, um, they never end up being flat. They always, they, they become so bumpy on her body that they lose mm. their silhouette essentially. Well, she's not that shapely. I mean, you no, can see that. <laughs> the undressed version on the left here, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call that buxom. No, but as but, soon as uh, you start to turn her, I found that that was starting to get confusing. Um, yeah, I mean, about, I chose a three quarter pose just before actually thinking about costume detail and it's not ideal for showing asymmetry. Like it's, it's, it's not clear, but the intention with that diagonal is that it, it all, all converges on her left shoulder or at least yeah. as close to it as yeah. you can and that's get. that's kind of how I was working like with that. it. Yeah. But it's yeah. also with the, with the eye to animation, again, um, if those things are gonna move around, those are gonna start to really bubble and boil. Yeah. Uh, because of her body and Symmetry shape. makes things easier too, right? You don't have to think about which way the character is facing all the time. Yeah. So, so your design one, um, while the initial impact has not changed for me, like the moment I saw it, I was like, we, this is so much where we're going. Um, I think it's, there, there are some practical applications from a production standpoint um, that are gonna be tough. And, uh, and I think moving, where you're moving to, and I agree, I don't wanna land in that ultimate's place, but where you're moving to is still maintaining the things I like about it. Um, we are still like the reference point being sort of the old, that blue Aquaman suit. Um, the, the avatar homage that I want to do with this, the waterbender homage, it's all in there. And, uh, and I think you're, you're moving in the right direction for me, but yeah, I can, I can see you're not sure yet. You haven't quite, mm -hmm. you're starting to you know, throw some elements in. And that's what I was doing this week too. Um, mine are a mess, so I'm not showing them today, but it was like, what I feel like you're doing now is you're, you're landing, you're starting to fall into like, um, random, not random. Uh, it feels a little less intentional in terms and, and which can lead us away from that totemic quality that we talk about all the time. So yeah, this is so a process of discovery here. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's, I think it's a step along the way. It is, it's absolutely a step along the way. And you're, you're, you're correcting your own criticisms of it. You know what I mean? Um, oh, that's, that's one of the nicest things anyone's ever said to me, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> well, see, this is, we, we work well together, man. My, my, my notes are, are not, like make it 10% cooler. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I see what you're doing and I, and I was going down that same path. Like you don't want to just have these be shapes for no reason, right? Um, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. And, uh, the sort of killer whale patterning. There was a there was a baby marina in a kind of a killer whale based suit, but I don't want to make it black and white. But the yeah. dark blue and white. I'm sort of thinking about like water mammal sort of patterning a little bit, and then messing around with it. I, I like those two white sort of triangular diamond stripes. Like those, I think I'm going to take to the next one. Yeah. And just change the position on the thigh and have it have it be more straight up and down, or even have them converging on the inside thigh. I think there's something there. I think yeah. that's that's the bit that I'm gonna take to the next one. Yeah. Uh, Mike, I shared the uh, the source file with you. Uh, I would welcome your uh, your uh, your thoughts, your visual thoughts, if you want to take a stab and do some uh, costume takes. If you feel uh, so yeah, inclined, that might be cool. I'm probably gonna take a stab at that uh, this weekend for sure. Because yeah, that's that's a really fun thing. What what I've done, like um, I can share what I'm working on here, I think, um, one second. Three, two, one. Okay, that should be sharing my screen, hopefully. It is, yep. Um, so yeah, I was working on something here, um, another just kind of casual, sorry, I gave her ears. Can you see that? <laughs> ears again. It's not too late. Damn it. You can still cover yeah, them. No, the, I, no, I, I can get rid of those. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, again, like where you're kind of focused and, th and this is the way that I, I've always been with my art. I mean, the only, the only, um, not the only, but the, the, the big book that I've worked on that that's been published with DC comics was, uh, the, uh, the book exit stage left the Snagopus Chronicles, which was a, a gritty reboot of the Hannah Rivera character Snagopus written by Mark Russell. So there's, it's not a lot, it's not a lot of superhero stuff. And that's my portfolio up to that point. Like I haven't drawn a lot of superhero stuff. I kind of gravitate more. It's like people wearing jackets, um, you know, people in casual attire, more, more grounded stories. So when I, when I do dip into doing superhero things, I've done like a series of these DC drawings of, of characters wearing like, um, you know, just like like a Nightwing drawing where like he's wearing a leather jacket, but like wearing a Nightwing shirt under it, like all this kind of casual stuff. And that's kind of where my brain goes when I approach these things. Yeah, and where, your where you're designing. It's kind of along those yeah, lines. Yeah, yeah. Great. Right. Yeah. And so if anyone hasn't like checked that. out Snagglepuss, it's gorgeous. And it's a great story too. Oh, it's Mark Russell or Rosalind or Russell, right? Uh, Mark, Mark Russell, Mark Russell yeah. 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 He's a great writer. Mike does gorgeous work on it. And don't, don't be fooled by the Snagglepuss of it all. It's a, yeah, it's a pretty it's a, deconstructive take and a, a pretty dark story yeah. um but yeah so that's 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 it's kind of where my artistic like brain brain goes is is, is less like where you're drawing a, like a super suit um I, I just when i started drawing her i was just like well what, what is she like in when she's not wearing the super suit um when she's not in in, in superhero mode she's just a girl from newfoundland and i i, I started drawing this as if um you know, I figured, okay, she's uh, like amphibian, she swims. If she's a teenager, maybe she works as a lifeguard. Um, so that's kind of where I was approaching this. This is awesome. the, the reference that I pulled up is a, this pool, um, this weird swimming pool that exists in this town that my grandparents are from called Plate Cove, which is uh, out by Bonavista Bay. Um, oh, wow. And so, yeah, I just wanted to have her in that setting. Uh, and just, again, just like coming up with ideas of... Um, Please tell me that tank top is red with a white cross on it. Like that's a lifeguard top she's wearing. It'll look great I was, I was, I was going to do the reverse. I was going to do um, a white with a red cross, but actually now that you say that, I think I will do red with the white. Um, so yeah, I just, again, like thinking about like, okay, if she did grow up here, what she, what would she do? And of course, if she was a teenager looking for a job, she would be a lifeguard because she can manipulate water. Um, so I don't know what, question was asked that led me to this but uh i hopefully we're I'm, I'm on track and answered something yeah well i think i invited you to participate and you were sort of I think, giving oh, a caveat yes. like i'm more a real life grounded kind of guy and you be you like like yes. do that stuff do so, do jackets and yeah. lifeguard uniforms it doesn't have just because i'm doing this sort of battle suit take like i think what we would love to see from you is you doing your own your own thing well, well so, um, something I'm i was sure. actually just reminded of when uh, when you were uh, when I was looking at yours, um, I'll stop screen sharing my screen now. Um, was the um, actually like Christopher Christopher Pratt? No relation to the actor Chris Pratt, but the the Newfoundland artist who actually um, oh, yeah. designed the Newfoundland flag. So there's elements 
of, of the blue in there. And even if you, I'm like, this is stupid because I should be able to remember what exactly what a flag looks like off the top of my head. But I think if you turn it sideways, the design that he has in the triangles oh. on the left-hand side could kind of form an M. Fascinating. Um, that was so not that I think that like on my part, but that's I'm gonna look into that. Oh, I love God. the Newfoundland flag. Well, I mean, yes. I think he was riffing on the Union Jack, kind of incorporating graphic elements, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, because th th that's basically about what the we. Wrong flag? Yeah. No, I, I think you're probably right because um, we it, it does have that kind of like white space to make an X through yes. it, kind of like yeah, the yeah. Jack would, and that that was the I don't I, I should probably know the history, but uh, I, that flag I, I'm not actually sure when it was introduced, um, but you know a few decades ago at least. Okay, note to um, self: I will look at that flag and think. Yeah, about, I think just about those it. lines. We can subtly kind of echo that. That would add another level to it. And that's uh, yeah. that's part of yeah, not, not that I think right? that she like whatever inspires you like choices. No, it's it's guys, it's so obvious. I'm just, I'm sharing it in the chat um, on the side because it's I didn't even think of that. And when you look at it, you're like, oh my god, this is so. How did we not think of this sooner? Um, you're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. There's so much there. <laughs> I just yeah, like oh yeah, not that this is yeah, but like you right. know or. Ooh. You know, okay. there's there's something there. Not that I, I think that it would be a great idea to just be like, oh, the Newfoundland superhero just have the Newfoundland flag on her. Like she's not guardian. Um, but there is something to play with in those yep. those graphical elements. It can inform some decision making. Oh, it's, right? I think Sometimes. it's it's definitely part of the 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 pot the the the, the inspiration pile now. Yeah. Um yeah, nice. that is it's a great funny. Uh, insight, Mike. When I was seeing the blue, I was like, when I think of I don't know what colors I think of when I associate with Newfoundland, but I don't think of blue until I thought about, wait, wait, the flag is half blue, of course. Like, so yeah, there's, there's totally something there. That's very cool. I, that, thank you. I didn't even think of that. Um, Mike, if I could make a, a, a wish list request, um, and I don't know, I certainly feel no, no absolute, no need. Um, we, we talk about when we first meet her, we talk about when she's like 15 in Grand Bank, um, and she's this, you know, she's a young girl who is about to embark on something huge in her life. Um, and she shows up in, you know, like skinny jean sneakers and a homemade knit black sweater with a big orange P on it for Puck because Puck is her favorite. And of course, I'm sure like he doesn't have a lot of merchandise out there at that point. And so she, someone would have knit this for her. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to give you a, an assignment, but holy shit, would I love to see that from you. Uh, no, when, when you said that, because um, you mentioned that when we were talking last night, that that really, yeah, resonated with me. Like, that's, that's yeah, I would love to, to take a stab at that for sure. Like that, and that I version also that think Kalman is drawing, that version that Kalman is drawing, three years younger, yeah. uh, wearing that outfit. Oh, my God, would that be so cool? I, th I did also think it's, it's definitely rings true with, like, um, at least some of my experience, like, you know, it, it is very isolated here and you kind of like, yeah, like in the same way that I think maybe we would look at whether it's like bands or, or successful people who often leave Newfoundland and go to, to Toronto or definitely if you're working in the arts or something, you, 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 you tend to hit, go to, to Toronto and, and you end up romanticizing that. Like, I can't wait to, you know, the cliche of I can't wait to get out of the small town and get to the big city. And this idea that this this girl is is sitting in her in her in her small town, like looking up to these as like a mainland superhero, you know, from the city, you know, wanting to be just like that, and then she gets the opportunity to to go do that too. I think it's just so real and relatable. So the I think you're you're spot on with that. And yeah, of course, yeah, to her being like this this fan girl who has her own puck sweater is is such a cute idea. Uh, so yeah, I'm not again. Like I said, I'm not someone who can give you an assignment, but if someday I open yeah. my eyes online, no, I'd, I'd, I'd love to do it. <laughs> um, guys, since we're, so I, I noticed we're kind of over time. Yeah. Right. Um, I just want to kind of wrap it up and wind down, but I want to give Mike. Uh, I want to ask Mike, Mike F, about uh, the Newfoundland and Labrador comics anthology. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes. Um, so that is something that I've been trying to have happen um, in some iteration for the last year or so. Um, COVID kind of threw a wrench in things. Um, and I ended up 
like I said, late last year moving to Ontario for the year, and now I'm back. So I'm trying to get this this uh, going again. I was actually talking to the people who run the comic shop in downtown St. John's, downtown comics about uh, this potentially going somewhere. Cause there's, there is a, a comic scene here and it's getting bigger. And I mean, like um, uh, if, if you're, if people aren't aware, there's a Newfoundland artist named Paul Tucker, who's very good. Who's got a book out uh, written by Paul Aller right now uh, with the vault called hollow heart, which is really good. And people are buzzing about it. Uh, so there's a, there's a growing Newfoundland community uh and uh you know when i you know I, I, when i wanted to work in comics there wasn't really anyone for me to go like oh someone from newfoundland has done that really like it, it, it's weird considering this is a province that's very um passionate about the arts and there's a lot of artist funding and stuff but a when it came to weather. comics i was like keeping people in a lot of bad weather keeping people in <laughs> tours and, and drawing and and making music and stuff but when it came to comics i was like how is you know, like no one, no one from here is worked from worked for Marvel or DC. Like, how has that not happened? Uh, and now that, like, I don't want to say, like, you know, to my own horror, but the fact that I got to do that, I want to be like, look, everyone, like, this is a career. Like, it's not like in the '80s where you would go work in the Marvel bullpen in in New York City. Like, you can be from here and you can work in comics. So, like, the 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 plan is to have this anthology and be able to put be like look we we are doing some stuff here um so hopefully hopefully that's something that happens and gets off the ground yeah i think that's awesome looking around at who's doing cool things right next door to you instead of looking away at some magical promised land of comics elsewhere and just nurturing the talent like like i i always try to be the person i wish i'd met when i was starting out you know and it seems like that's exactly what you're doing with this and you know having something like that however um, long it takes or whatever kind of a big or small splash it makes for the people involved, it could be the difference between them choosing this career and committing or feeling lost and, and going to work at the insurance company, right? Like it's important yeah. to kind of uh, do what you're doing. I think it's, I think that's awesome. So I, I heard about that. Oh, thanks man. To, uh, to talk about it. Also uh, last question for you. Um, unless there's something else you want to plug first, but the visitor, is that, is that coming soon? How's that going? Uh, so that is a, yeah, that's a, a, a self-published independent thing that me and my friend uh, uh, who's from Nova Scotia, John O'Hunter wrote. Uh, that is actually available on Comixology. If anyone Amazing. is interested in buying it, it's, it's, it's this short little funny thing. Uh, originally a short film script that we, we turned into a comic and uh, just something to do. Um, so that's available on Comixology. It's called The Visitor um, or no. Wait, it's called Visitors. We changed the title at the last minute. Visitors. And uh, if you are in St. John's, Newfoundland, there are some physical copies that we had printed that are available at Downtown Comics. Um, and on top of that, um, buying, buying Snagglepuss, uh, Exit Stage Left Snagglepuss Chronicles is, is sold enough that I get royalties. So if you buy that, that helps me out. And... Um, the uh there's I, I contributed a story uh, or drew a story written by ryan katie in the uh, uh a wave blue worlds anthology called maybe someday which i'm not sure if you can still buy and might be at some comic stores uh because it was a kickstarter thing i don't really know about distribution of that but uh you you, you can buy places uh and it was that was a, a front project that i'm pretty proud of um so yeah that's that's awesome. what i've got going on yeah, if you like what you saw of Mike's art, check check these things out. Um, sorry, for me, I've got, I've got links. Up. I'm putting some links up in the in the chat. Thank you. Yeah, I've got uh, I've got a cover coming out next week, uh, next month. Sorry for uh, Stillwater from Image. It's a variant. I'm super excited about that. Oh, it's a cool uh, small town horror book drawn by uh, Ramon Perez, written by Chip Zdarsky, both local Toronto boys. Um, super happy to participate in some small way and do a variant, and uh, and I'm also Which covering uh, Stillwater. Stillwater, and that's Stillwater still- issue seven. Where is it available? It will be available at all comic stores. And okay, so it's that's a- everywhere. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I'm I'm doing regular covers for a Western horror series called Midnight Western Theater from Scout Comics. Uh, issue one is out. Issue two is coming. Super fun. Goth cowboys. If you thought Westerns didn't have enough goth and vampire stories I was, didn't I've have always cowboys, this is the series for you. <laughs> um, 
I, I have a question for for Mike before uh, before yep. we wrap this up. I, I just specifically about uh, your intentions about um, when it comes to 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 uh, voice casting uh, and things like that. Uh, obviously, like it, 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 I, I trust you because you you've been here. You you know, but something that that concerned me when when rumors were flying around last year about like the MCU introducing Alpha Flight, I was like, what if they do Marina and and someone who just like doesn't it like casts someone who doesn't understand the nuances of different places in Canada. And I would want it. It's important. If she's from Grand Bank, she, Grand Bank, she would have a thick Newfoundland accent. Yeah. Um, so that's something that like, I hope in, in any iteration of her, like, I'm not saying that the actor needs to be from Newfoundland, but at least someone thinks of that and incorporates it. Cause it's like, if you're watching a movie set in Boston, you expect the characters to have a Boston accent. Um, so like that's, if you're from Grand Bank, I would assume you have a, a thick Newfoundland accent. Yeah, so we're in an interesting position for voice talent in that um, because this is completely unauthorized, right? Um, it, uh, having name talent attached is a weird thing. Um, mm -hmm. we, we've had some ideas and we've talked to a few people who might uh, unofficially join as cast members um and like let rumor take over um mm -hmm. there is we are the, the 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 heated one is that we are writing in a cameo of course for wolverine um and uh, there was a moment mm -hmm. where i actually reached out to brent butt to see if he wanted to be our wolverine because <laughs> uh, i worked on that uh, <laughs> i worked on corner gas animated a few years ago i helped set that up and i thought it would be kind of hilarious he's also <laughs> a big comic funny. Fan. Um, but oh, yes, it to be so for me, part of it is visualizing as well in the, in the design process. I imagine who these people are and I try to find those correlations. Um, she, I, she's not from uh, Newfoundland, but in my mind, Emily Hampshire from Schitt's Creek would be a really oh, yeah. interesting uh, marina, but I absolutely need her to have that accent. And it would be great mm -hmm. to find someone who is actually from out there who would like to take part uh, because also we will be, it's eventually when we get to the the, the, the big side of the production, we will be running a Kickstarter. And so, uh, you know, we, any, anybody who is going to be involved, uh, it's that kind of approach. I'd love to have somebody who helps bring some profile to the project as well and can help push it out to a wider audience. Um, but at the same time, it's, a fan, it's an unauthorized fan film. So it's kind of a tricky one to get people involved in. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, I would always be open to suggestions. So please. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, let me know if there's somebody who, you know, somebody from out there, uh, even like if there's a if there's a newscaster or there's somebody who you think would be great, like just oh, yeah. throw, me, uh, throw me some names and throw me some links and, and I, I'm open to suggestions. And that goes to anybody who's paying attention here on the side as well. Um, send us some dream casting, uh, but like, let's, let's be real about it. Uh, I am talking to someone right now about the talisman role um that Kalman drew my attention to and uh we'll see if that goes anywhere um I have my own thoughts about these things but yeah it, again it all has to be about the authenticity right so it would be great for me to have someone who actually is from there as opposed to someone who's jumping on YouTube to learn the accent um yeah yeah I, I will say I, I you know Irish Irish people can do the accent pretty well there was a movie that came out a few years ago um the, the Grand Seduction, a uh, comedy movie starring uh, Brendan Gleeson. Yeah, it was shot here, and uh, Brendan Gleeson, he's from Ireland. He could he could nail a new land okay. accent. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think Brendan Gleeson would make a good marina, but no, probably not. I mean, <laughs> man, the lines of the bathing suit would be all wrong on his uh, <laughs> his very stout physique. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But I, 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 as always, I am open to input. I am open to suggestions. Um, I love the communal aspect of this. So please consider yourself part of the community now, and uh, and throw oh, me some names if something thanks. comes across. Okay, will do. Um, Thank you. So I guess I'm going to say there that this is where we're going to wrap up. Um, I put some links up in the chat to some of the stuff that uh, to Mike's Twitter, Mike's uh, Instagram, and his website. A few of the things the guys mentioned. I have put a link up to the Patreon because I got to get better about pushing that. Um, so please, if you guys, if anyone wants to support, uh, yes, it's me with the with the there, it's me with the hat out. Okay, um, but yeah, thank you guys, Calman, Mike. Thank you for making my Friday. Post your own links too, Mike. Oh, you did. Okay, good. Yeah, Go post the Patreon. I post the Patreon. So yeah, 
Um, but guys, thank you for making my Friday. This is always a big deal for me and it's a lot of fun. And uh, thanks for uh, having me, guys. Like, I, I really like, appreciate you. Honestly, me. dude, this is this is fantastic. Yeah, what an absolute this is, pleasure. Yeah, this is everything I wanted for this project. It's like I, I don't know, the project brings community, right? And uh, and this this shows how it's working. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And thank and you thanks everybody, everybody for showing up to listen to us talk this stuff yeah. out. It's uh, <laughs> super. Uh, I'm always surprised. Uh, super uh, super gratifying to see. And thank you for staying for the whole thing too. Uh, <laughs> tune in next time where we'll have Brent Butt and Brendan Leeson on. Stop it! Stop it! I make no promises. In marina costumes. <laughs> I make no promises. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks a lot. See you next time, whenever that's going to be. Everybody, cool. See All ya. Right.